Thank you, Simon, and thank you once again for inviting me. Well, as you've probably seen, um, this uh, webinar is dedicated to the carry trade, and this is something new um, to our syllabus. I mean, we figured, for those of you who already know me, um, we've presented strategies and ideas to do with trader psychology. We've done it on trend-based trading and also reversal-based trading. So we thought, well, why not cover something which ultimately gives you a very good return for doing even less than what we talked about before, trading um, the weekly and the daily time frames. Okay, so without further ado, let's jump in. Um, we've got to have a few giveaways in this webinar, so do keep your eyes peeled. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Robert Colville, founder of thelazytrader.com. founded that in 2012, and I've been trading for about, well, 10 years actually now. It's the big double digits and <laughs> approaching this year. And I'll be honest, if you want to first start trading, I, um, I sucked at it. I was so bad. Um, I made every single mistake in the book several times over and then some more just to just to make sure. Um, I went long when I should have been going short, I went short when I should have been going long, I confused the currency pair for a, a commodity and a commodity for an exotic stock. You know, I really learned from the school of hard knocks back in the day and certainly I've blown up trading account after trading account in my formative years back in 2007. And the reason I chose trading, essentially, uh, was for the wrong reasons initially. I wanted to make a lot of money. Having moved to London as a journalist to seek my fortune, I did a Dick Whittington and moved to the big city and um, fell into trading because I looked around me, I saw all of my peers who got into white-collar professions like banking, uh, medicine, accounting, um, all of that. Um, they were certainly working less hard than I was and they were certainly making more money than I was and I thought to myself well I love journalism but I didn't want to be a foot soldier for someone else's ideology <laughs> so I figured that the best way to do anything is to do it yourself whether it's your own business or running your own magazine and what appealed to me about trading was of course the benefits which I'm sure you're already already familiar with and that's making your money work hard for you on your behalf so you can make your money grow providing you know what you're doing of course Okay, so after many um, tears, blood, sweat, or blood, sweat, and tears, um, I became finally consistently profitable. I say finally, after about a year and a half of struggling in 2008, 2009, and um, after building up a track record on the daily and the weekly time frame, trading predominantly Forex, I moved on to the commodities and the occasional stock and um, launched the brand The Lazy Trader in 2012 which has taught uh, thousands of people around the world how to trade specifically in the set and forget style on the daily and the weekly time frame. Okay, we don't do intraday trading. I've got a lot of respect for people who intraday trade. Um, for me, and many of my clients, dare I say, um, I don't have the attention span for intraday trading. And you can, you can ask anyone who knows me, I am not very good at being at the same at this, tied down to a time and a place. I absolutely can't stand it. Maybe I'm a commitment phobe. I don't think it's down to that. Talk to my girlfriend, she'll say otherwise. <laughs> but anyway, trading in the style of a day, end of day trader or end of week trader, as we're now uh, concentrating our efforts as well, it allows you to free up a lot of time. So you can essentially focus on the hobbies and interests and family, of course. So when I'm not trading, which is I can say 90% of the time. I'm contributing to some of these magazines which you see and I do a bit of mentoring for the Prince's Trust. I've got a couple of mentees there who I help uh, build their business from um, the ground up and these are disadvantaged people from uh, troubled backgrounds most of the time. So yeah, I like to keep my life pretty full where possible. But anyway, that's enough about me. I'm pretty sure you didn't take time out of your busy schedules to hear me prattling about myself all day although we can do that if you really want to. Let's get to the pith. Okay, so once again, for those of you who don't know The Lazy Trevor, I just want to reassure you that we've definitely got credentials. Um, we've got our CPD accreditation, and uh, all of our courses are accredited. Our coaches are accredited by the Society of Technical Analysts in the UK, and we've got a very good Forex Peace Army rating. Moving on. Okay, so let's talk about the carry trade. Um, have a look at this disclaimer, there's nothing untowards here, just standard stuff. Okay, so the carry trade, it is um, a long-term strategy which we use to essentially um, arb or arbitrage the difference between um, interest rates offered by two different currency pairs or countries. Okay, we essentially, thanks to the leverage broker gives us, 
um, we're able, if we're buying the country or the currency pair with the higher interest rate and in turn selling the one with the lower interest rate, we can get a decent um, sum every night. And this is what we call positive carry. Okay, so let's take, for example, a few years ago, back in 2007, where Australia, New Zealand, those big mining economies, or more so Australia, should I say, is gold produced, gold mining, diamond mining, you, know, you name it, they mine over there. They used to have quite a high interest rate. It's gone down uh, ever since. But the Australian dollar versus the Japanese yen used to be a very popular currency because what people would do is they'll go long on the Australian dollar while selling the Japanese yen. For those, for those of you who aren't overly familiar with Japan, from a fundamental perspective, they're in dire straits. They've got an inverse population pyramid. Um, they've got deflation. Um, yeah, the balance of um, well, the balance of exports is completely steeped against them. So they've kept interest rates low for a long time to kickstart the economy. Whereas Australia, they've got a very high, or well, did have a very high interest rate. I believe it was about between five to six percent for a number of years. So what people would do is they would essentially um, go long on the Australian dollar versus the Japanese yen, because what they'll be doing is essentially taking advantage of the leverage interest differentials between the Australian dollar and the Japanese yen. Um, I will explain the actual mechanics of how this works in just um, well shortly, should I say? Okay, so if you don't get it immediately. Don't worry, it's all going to make sense very soon. I can assure you that. Okay, so the carry trade is generally true to form um, and true to the style of lazy trading. Is they're executed on the daily and the weekly time frame because the real aim of people who are in the carry trade is not necessarily, even though it is a bonus to make capital growth, is just to be in the trade for as long as possible because they're doing so well from the interest differentials. Let's move on. Okay, so like I mentioned, just to recap, we are buying the currency with the um, higher interest rate while selling the currency with the lower interest rate. Or what we could be doing is selling the country, sorry, the country or the currency pair with the lower interest rate and inadvertently going long um, with the country or currency of the higher interest rates. Um, at the moment, <laughs> what is slightly unfortunate is the fact that many countries around the world with the high interest rates that we're talking about, Brazil, South Africa, Turkey, um, Indonesia, they're the ones where uh, they have quite high interest rates, but stability, unfortunately, isn't, well, guaranteed. Certainly in South Africa, we've seen uh, President Zuma um, acting in a very dictatorial way, and of course, the round off the back of that absolutely collapsed against the US dollar, uh, momentarily, should I say. Um, but essentially, um, if we're looking to get positive carry these days by essentially taking advantage of countries with high interest rates and buying their currency um, against countries with a low interest rate, it essentially means going long on a, <laughs> a country which might have underlying um, problems economically and politically. Okay, but regardless of that, this is a great strategy to keep um, in your reserve. Okay, because what goes up must come down, and what goes interest rates cannot remain the same forever. Okay, so here we go. In terms of taking advantage um, of the carry trade on your broker platform, what we need is the cash daily rolling. One thing a lot of retail traders or people relatively new to the markets, including myself back in the day, is if we're trading the cash daily rolling position, your broker, um, okay, they're going to charge you. But if, for example, you are in negative carry, say you're selling um, the country or the um, currency with the um, higher interest rate and going along on the one with the shorter, the smaller interest rate, then you'll be penalized for it every night. Okay, Cash daily running positions, a lot of brokers, they charge LIBOR um, plus their markup, whatever that might be. Some brokers charge an absolute fortune for this, especially BBIT brokers. Uh, <laughs> Um, need I say more, but um, London Interbank operate plus the markup, um, and if there's positive carry, i.e. you're going long on the country with the higher interest rate and selling the country with the smaller interest rate, you'll be rewarded overall. If it's the other way around, you will be penalised. Okay, so this is one thing to bear in mind. I always have a look. If I'm trading a currency pair, no matter what it is, I always have a look to see what the interest rates are like because I do not want to be penalized and paying exorbitant costs every night. That's what we call a business that is hemorrhaging money, okay? Especially if you're 
blissfully unaware. Okay, so what I tend to do, and this is a tip for you, if you do, and this is happening um, an awful lot, if we're looking to sell, say for example, the Australian dollar, which has an interest rate of about 2%, I believe, um, against the US dollar, which is practically nothing, then instead of having a cash trade rolling position where you are suffering negative carry, i.e. you're being charged the interest rate differentials rather than being credited to them, um, which you would be if you're going long on Aussie dollar, then I will go for a options um, um, order, for example. Um, because what happens is your spread might be bigger, but you won't be paying that overall, um, that overall kind of like charge every night. Okay, so that's just a little tip for you so that you don't uh, find yourself inadvertently hemorrhaging money. And this uh, admittedly took me a number of years to discover this um, in my trading journey back in 2007. Um, I stumbled across this and I realized, when you realize the sneaky ways that some brokers um, can, um, some of their tactics that they employ to make more money out of you, it really makes you rather jaundiced. And um, lo and behold, I actually spoke to a broker not long ago. Um, I can't reveal the name of it, but it's it's uh, the broker actually said that they um, penalize their clients if the asset class gaps against them, but if it gaps in their favor, they do not reward their clients for the gap. And a lot of they rely on the fact that a lot of their clients um, actually don't even know about this, so they can just simply hoodwink them and blindsight them and just make money out of them. And this is, you know, when you get to know the broker industry inside out, it does make you really appreciate the ethical ones even more because it can be a bit of a minefield. Okay, so what makes a carry trade possible? What well, leverage, okay? It allows you to essentially control a lot more money with a relatively small deposit, like 100 to one. And some brokers are 500 to one. Um, there are murmurs from the FCA that um, they're gonna um, make it a requirement to reduce leverage. Um, but that's yet to be confirmed. Um, but essentially, if we are looking at, um, say for example, we are looking to um, go long on a currency um, pair, let's say for example, for this sake, um, Australian dollar versus the US dollar, and the difference between the, um, or the interest rate differentials is 3%, then we'll make 3,000, which is 3% uh, of 100,000, providing the interest rate stays fixed for the year, which is, is essentially 30% return on the year, okay? Um, but this, of course, depends on the country's central bank policy. Um, it really does depend on whether they keep interest rates constant. Of course, if you look at the charts and you see any kind of like meeting with the ECB or the Bank of England um, or the Federal Reserve, when they're talking about monetary policy and whether they increase or decrease interest, um, uh, interest rates, I'm pretty sure you can recall or imagine that if there's an interest rate um, hike, then the currency will go up, and if it's cut, it will go down. Because if you think about it from a logical perspective, from an investor standpoint, if you have like um, a load of money, then you're gonna want to invest it in the country or the asset class, which yields the higher interest rate over and above the one with the lesser interest rate. Okay, so let's go back to 2007 again. I'm going to give you some examples here because I can appreciate it's quite a bit of <laughs> quite a bit of theory we're talking about here. And um, I'm I'm someone who likes to be shown. Um, I think that's a far better idea than just uh, reading off facts and figures. So let's say, for example, um, back in 2007, we had the Australian dollar versus the Japanese yen. That was the historical uh, carry tra carry trade of choice with the kind of like in investment bankers and banks. And I buy the Australian dollar and essentially receive an interest rate of 6.5%, and I'm selling the Japanese yen with a 0.5% interest rate to borrow. The net profit on the deal is 6 and a quarter percent, 6.25%. Whereas if I'm selling, for example, the um, United States dollar or US Swiss, Swissy, also known as, if I'm buying the Swiss franc and receive a 2.75 interest and I am selling the US dollar, USD, and pay 2% interest rate to borrow, the net profit on the deal is three quarters of a percent, okay? So one great thing at your fingertips to look at what interest rates are is simply going to these two resources. I prefer globalrates.com, interest rates, central banks. It will give you a very accurate and uh, relevant snapshot as to what 
the interest rates are for any country in the world, okay? And it's always good to keep up to date with that. Um, it's just good habits. I always look at the interest rates in the country before I place a trade so I know if I'm getting positive carry or negative carry for the trade, okay? If I'm getting negative carry, I place a futures a futures contract, okay? That's the, um, that's the um, way to avoid paying, essentially, negative carry every night. Okay, so here we go. We've got this. This is, like I mentioned, on the right-hand side, we've got the list of the countries um, with the higher interest rate, typically the kind of countries which have higher uh, volatility. That's South Africa, Russia, uh, Brazil, 14.2%. So if we're essentially going um, long on the Brazilian real and selling the US dollar, you'd make a veritable fortune in leverage interest. Okay, the carry will be very positive in your favor, but we can only do that, like I'll describe to you in a bit, um, if we've got a technical reason to get into the trade. Okay, we can't just go jumping into the market for no reason. Okay, so here we go. Let's um, look at this visually. I'm a very visual person. Like I mentioned, I like to be shown um, with lots of pictures. I would have had more pictures <laughs> for you and more diagrams, but unfortunately, my computer had a bit of a meltdown this morning, and I was very feverishly putting together this presentation at the last minute, unfortunately. All the text was there, but all the pictures disappeared, and that's, well, never really convenient if you're presenting to a wide audience. So what we do to tra trade or identify a potential opportunity for carry trade is we look for a currency pair with a big interest differential. Say, for example, the Turkish lira, um, so 7.5%. And we're looking to buy the Turkish lira against the US dollar, which is just half a percent. So if we're essentially selling the US dollar and buying the Turkish lira, that means that we make 7% overall profit and we'll be rewarded with this in positive carry. Okay. And it, the, the way we look at it is say, for example, it's paired US dollar versus the Turkish lira. Um, we'll be looking to essentially sell the US dollar while simultaneously buying the Turkish lira. Like I said, it's very easy to do because all currencies are in pairs. It's a two-horse race after all. Okay, so let's have a look at this. If the US dollar at the time of this chart, when this chart was taken, I was trending upwards rather aggressively, <laughs> would we have a technical reason to actually go long on the, um, um, well, essentially go long on the Turkish lira? Not really when the US dollar is an upward trend um, because the chart will always reflect the currency on the left hand side, the terms currency. Okay, so if we're going along on the US dollar in this trend, upward trend, um, we would essentially be selling the Turkish lira. So, whilst we might be doing well from a technical standpoint and getting the capital growth that a long trade with the trend will get, we'll be penalized with the negative carry because essentially we are um, buying the currency with 0.5%, the small interest rate the tiny interest rate and selling the currency with the high interest rate okay so whilst if we're buying the dip for example in this upward trend it's a great upward trend by the way we're getting capital growth but we're being penalized with negative carry so if we did want to make the capital growth by buying the dip like i mentioned what we can do is just use a futures contract instead of cash daily rolling order of our broker because what that does is it mitigates the what well, it, it basically means that you don't pay a negative carry you pay a slightly bigger spread than you would if it was a cash daily rolling except you won't have those pesky overnight fees like you would if it was a cash daily rolling position and those are never convenient cash daily rolling positions if i'm in a trade for a week two weeks three weeks four months five months a year there's no way i would want to be in a cash daily rolling because that would see any gain i make completely dwarfed by these overnight fees and negative carry if that is the case okay so let's move on and look at some other examples okay we've got like fast forward to now we've got um, the Australian dollar and the New Zealand dollar and the difference between the two of them is for example 0.75 percent okay so this is more realistic we can essentially look to sell the Australian dollar versus the New Zealand dollar here. The, the overall trend, okay, it's a very, <laughs> we've got a bit of um, sideways movement or a lot of sideways movement, shall I say. So it would make sense to simply look for the top of the range or key level um, 
and look for a sell opportunity for the Australian dollar versus the New Zealand dollar because we can take advantage of the uh, positive carry given that at the time of preparing these slides the interest rate was higher in New Zealand than it was in, in Australia. Okay, so this is what happens when we can work it out using the numbers. Okay, so if for example we've got our fundamental argument like the interest rate difference, say if we've got an opportunity to sell the currency with the lower interest rate and buy the one with the higher interest rate, then great. That's half the battle done. We've identified the pair. Let's see if we've got a technical reason congruent with our direction. Okay, so if we've got that, then that's an example of Aussie New Zealand here. We do have that actually. Okay, we've got the fundamental point with the interest rates, say we can make positive carry of selling the Aussie dollar against the New Zealand dollar, and we've also potentially got a technical reason to sell because it's not trending in a direction which makes us sell the currency pair with the smaller the smaller interest rates, sorry. Okay, so if, for example, we are trading with a leveraged account, like many of us are, in fact, all of us are pretty much, and we've got the difference in the interest rate between the two countries, is 0.75, we times that by 10, in a leverage situation where $10,000 or 10,000 pounds becomes 100,000, then we can essentially do the same with the interest rate. Okay, so 0.75% uh, profit becomes 7.5 or $750 when we're looking at this. Okay, so essentially, um, if the leverage is 10, then we can increase the interest rate by 10 and when I say the interest rate, I mean the difference between the two pairs in terms of the positive carry. Okay, let's bit, go a little bit more extreme. Let's, <laughs> let's have a look at the US dollar versus the Brazilian real. Um, this is quite an extraordinary difference between the two. There's a difference of 13.7% uh, between the two. That makes very good carry. Okay, so what we want to do in order to take advantage of essentially selling the US dollar and buying the Brazilian real is of course finding an opportunity, a technical one on the chart to sell the US dollar versus the Brazilian real. Okay, so looking at the chart long term on the weekly time frame, we can see that the US dollar is, well, it's in a range, it's in a huge range here. So we are looking essentially to trade a pullback in this range. We can see that over the past, well, I wish I could see, this goes back over the past, let's say 15 years, that the US dollar versus the Brazilian real has done nothing but range. So I know it's a little bit, um, bit of a volatile place up here. We've got um, above four spot hundred. We've got a few breakouts, but what we're looking for is essential opportunity to sell the rally. As we can see that the US dollar has turned around against the Brazilian real at this point at four, and it's going back down into the middle of the range here, it's reverting to the reverting to the mean. So we're just looking for an opportunity to sell. So what we'll be doing essentially through selling the US dollar versus the Brazilian real is essentially, okay, making, taking advantage of the difference between the two um, cur currencies, which is a huge difference of 13.7%. Okay, so if we do the maths on this, we can see that, okay, the difference of 13.7% times 10%, so, sorry, times 10, which is the margin, where $10,000 becomes 100,000 equals a very sizable um, interest rate. Take 13,700. So for the checklist, what we've got here, in order for you to take away with you, and these are the five rules for doing this properly, is do we have the currency pair with a meaningful interest rate differential? Okay, and we can always find that out at the website globalrates.com. That's a very good resource, it's free, it's updated often. Does the chart agree in the direction okay, of the currency with the higher interest rate? And whilst we're simultaneously selling the one at the lower interest rate, do we have a technical entry, like in a trend? Do we have like the opportunity to buy the dip in an upward trend? Or do we have the opportunity to sell the rally in a downward trend? Have we trade sized? That's important, keeping your risk small, or small as well as comfortable. I'd always say in trading, never trade with money you, you can't afford to lose, worst case scenario. And also your stop loss, and this is true of every time I place a stop loss, 
is the stop loss at a point where if the market reaches it, it would render the setup invalid. Okay, that's important. And I'd always say that. Okay, so let's move on. I just want to talk to you about a couple of trades I'm in at the moment because we do have time on our side. Um, let's have a look. I'm currently selling um, the US dollar, funnily enough, against the Norwegian krona. This is a setup which has positive carry because the interest rates in Norway are, albeit not very much, they're slightly higher than what they are in America. So I'll be getting positive carry on this one, even though this wasn't the ulterior motive behind this a trade setup. This was a reversal setup where we just simply traded the, um, sold the top of the range here. We can see it's a very well established range. Here we go. And we simply sold the top and we're anticipating taking profit. We've scaled out in the midpoint here. We're just waiting for the price to come down to this horizontal level here. We're trailing our stop loss for every second sell bar as well. And people, a lot of people say they trade trending markets as absolutely fine. You've got speed and momentum behind you. But a lot of the time, um, range bound markets get overlooked. And for me, there's a lot of opportunity in range bound markets. It's a simple case of simply buying the bottom of the range here, like at this point here, and selling the top. One of our power zone strategies, which we have, is dedicated to obviously just taking advantage of where we can reasonably expect um, demand for a currency to come in, i.e., for example, the US dollar against the Norwegian krona. We can see that this is the cheapest point where, um, or the best point the US dollar has been against the Norwegian krona for quite some time, ever since August last year. And um, we can anticipate other people feeling the same way in the market. So what people who've got quite a um, high risk appetite tend to do, and this is congruent with our trading community, who a lot of our um, clients actually love this kind of trade, where you're simply placing an order on the level, you're not waiting for a price action based reversal at all, you're just simply buying on the level, stop loss down here behind where you might have seen price having faked out before. When I say a fake out, I mean a fast breakout like we have here. Um, so that you can be essentially be, say, the first ones in the move according to the chart. Okay, um, like let me just go back and simulate this for you, because it was a case on the web as well when we sold at this level. We had a number of people who, um, in our community, they actually were happy to have their orders on this horizontal level here, like so. With their stop loss around about here, and they're looking to simply, simply just take advantage of a potential reversal in this range. Risking 2% on this horizontal level, um, making 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 percent, 7 to 1 on the way down. So risking 1%, you would have made 7% potential profit on the way down if, as and when it hits the bottom side, the level of support, the floor, the level of demand, whatever you like to call it, um, that's what would make decent reward to risk. So a number of our clients place their orders on the level, stop loss above, around about here, points where the false breakout was evident. But people who are slightly less risk averse, they're very content with just simply waiting for a price action based reversal, which on the weekly time frame manifested itself as a bearish pin bar reversal here. And that's where people had that entry just below the low, stop loss above the high, and are looking to trail their stop loss for every second seller bar. And we're currently in this trade. Currently moved our stop loss to break even, and we'll be looking to, well, we've already scaled out half. We are just waiting there. I'm happy in the knowledge that typically um, <laughs> the bull climbs the stairs, the bear falls out the window. So typically in a falling market, the moves happen far uh, faster than in a bull market. Okay, so that contrasts with Euro dollar. Of course, looking at Euro dollar, we've got the inverse going on here, which is unsurprising. So it will, it wouldn't really phase us if our dollar knock sell position hits target exactly the same time as we have a potential sell opportunity for Euro dollar here. And we're looking to potentially sell at this horizontal level here. We can see that this range here hasn't been, um, what well, price hasn't been above this level since 2015, and it's a very well established range, and it makes sense given that this is a huge um, obstacle in the way of price, it makes sense to anticipate a potential selling coming in because this is the best price people who've held euros, um, this is the best price they've had to sell it in a number of years. So it just goes back to like supply and demand actually. If you've, for example, you've got like a possession and you've seen a multi-year high 
for selling that possession, you're going to sell it at that multi-year high um, if you want to get the best deal. And it, obviously, that still works. Uh, that's obviously works in financial markets. That whole logic, because if you don't, I mean, you'll be getting a less good deal. Of course, you can hang on, anticipating that year is going to go up even more. But like I said, we're technical traders here, and of course, you know, fundamentals aside, I mean, the eurozone isn't exactly. Uh, prosperous at the moment, and there's a lot of instability with various kind of countries um, echoing their desire to um, exit the European Union. We've we've had France has narrowed um, Marine Le Pen, uh, escaped her, and of course it had France elected her in the elections. Then we can reasonably expect the euro against the US dollar to have plummet in value because of course investors get jittery over uncharted terrain. Uh, let Brexit and the value of the British pound against the um, US dollar as well as euro and of course every other currency pair um, be as an example we're in the first we're in the biggest constitutional change in 300 years and markets funnily enough they don't like it they don't like uncertainty um, they like the continuation of change sorry they like the to prevent change um, to continue the status quo essentially because it gives predictability whereas you know, if we, if we go back to those countries which offer high interest rates, like, like Brazil, like Turkey, uh, like South Africa, Russia, Indonesia, they offer high interest rates, even though you'll be rewarded with positive carry. The fact is, is those countries aren't as stable as um, a number of these Western countries have been in the past, offering a higher interest rate, like Australia, one of the most stable economies, um, politically, socially, economically. That's one of the most stable countries I can think of. If you've got a country like that um, offering a high interest rate, then that's a, a double win, quite frankly. So going back to this trade, technically, regardless of the state of Europe, I will be looking to potentially build a sell position here. We did it all the way back at this point here, 2016, so just, uh, just over a year ago. Let's move on as well to some couple of other ideas um, which we're talking about. Um, forgive me, I mean, this computer is a little bit slow, struggling with parallels at the moment, it's a real shame, it's, it's starting to really annoy me, um, hopefully it won't, there would be too much of a lag. Um, okay, so let's go to New Zealand, um, Swiss, I believe it was, there we go, so for example here, New Zealand, Swiss, we can see that we've we've got lower highs and lower lows, we've got the 20 moving average below the 50, we've got the 50 moving average below the 200, that's a sign to us that the short, medium, and long-term traders are seeing from the same hymn sheet. So we're just waiting for an opportunity, given that we've got bearish cyclicity here with this currency pair, that we are looking to essentially um, sell the rally. And we're just waiting for a price action-based sell, whether it's a bearish pin bar reversal, a bit like what we had um, on the 10th of May, 2017, this year. Um, bearish pin bar reversal would look to sell that, whether it's on the daily or the weekly time frame. Okay, a lot of people ask me, well, why do you trade um, the um, the daily or the weekly time frame. It's not as exciting as intraday. Um, well, actually, I don't want my trading to be exciting. I want it to be as dull as possible so that I can actually have fun in other areas of my life. And if you think about it um, from opportunity flow, if you're trading just the daily and the weekly, how many times do you think you need to check the charts um, to identify potential opportunities and manage them? Well, if you're trading the daily, it makes sense to look every day and manage your trades once a day. If you're trading the weekly time frame, it makes sense to manage your trades once a week or analyze markets once a week. Okay, so that's the weekly time frame is severely underrated, and I am having more and more fun trading the weekly on its so own as the older I get, quite frankly. Maybe I'm getting too used to being lazy. But for me, I never really chose trading. Um, for academic reasons, I wanted to use financial markets in order to really kind of like um, make the most of my money and have my market, my money working for me on my behalf rather than like, like essentially getting deeply immersed and suddenly going out and buying four screens or five screens for my, my computer space station at home. No, I want trading just to be a vehicle to make excellent return on my capital rather than being chained to the desk. Um, you know, just boggle-eyed waiting for the next opportunity. I mean, like I mentioned to you earlier, I've got a lot of respect for people who trade at intraday. I, I really do. For me, it kind of contradicts the very reason why I chose trading. Okay, I, I chose trading 
so I can free up time away from the screen and have more time outside. I'm very much an outdoorsy person. I'm from Cornwall originally. Um, not really, <laughs> it's not in my blood to be desk bound. So any kind of strategy or a vehicle I can use, i.e. trading currencies or any asset class on the weekly time frame or the daily time frame uh, fulfills that. And I can understand how that will uh, appeal to um, a percentage of you and how it might also really kind of repel a percentage of you at the same time. I understand that everyone's different in that respect. And certainly for those set and forget traders and people who like to trade the hard time frames, we can definitely help you. Okay. So um, moving on from this, going back to the currencies, I mean, we, this year has compared to last year, not being that great in terms of the frequency of setups, but the percentage gain of those big moves, bigger moves, sorry, should I say, um, has been good. I just want to share with you the trade which we took for Brexit um, last year. Um, and here's another opportunity coming up with this. With good carry as well. Let me just rewind and let's go onto the hard time frame here. Because this will, you know, some of you will really quite like the look of this if you um, resonate with the kind of set and forget kind of mantra. So, for example, we'll take a look at Pound Swiss on the weekly time frame here. You'll notice that ever since 2011, just turning 2011, we've been sandwiched between two levels. And um, after a long trip back from Cornwall um, in 2015, December time, I noticed when I was doing my daily scan on the um, daily time frame, I noticed at the top of this long-term range here, at the very top here, let me just jump back and zoom in so I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. We had a fantastic opportunity to sell. So what we did, and what a number of my clients did, was simply place this as a bearish pin bar reversal. What made me so excited about this one was, okay, if we look at the level again, you can see that this horizontal level here is about um, seven, eight years um, strong. It hasn't been broken with any conviction at all. So it's more likely that we're gonna get a, a kind of reversal of this to the downside than it is to pop to the upside. So we just traded this as a conventional safe um, a third entry into what we'd normally teach as a um, reversal. So entry just below the low, stop was above the high, and we just left it. We had, um, unfortunately, we had negative um, carry for this one because we were selling the um, British pound um, in Britain, you know, very small interest rate, 0 0.2, whatever, at the time. Whereas in Switzerland, it's 0 0.75. They've got negative interest rates. So we were getting penalized, unfortunately, had we been trading a cash daily rolling position, because the difference between that is, you know, we're, we're pretty much down um, 0.72% every night so, um, of, of the interest rate differentials I'm talking about. So looking at this, you can see that had we just entered this trade just below the low, stop us above the high, we've got a long way to go here, <laughs> all the way to the bottom. So many times this 2% little uh, risk here fits into our award all the way down here, all the way down, all the way down, all the way down here. So we just set the trade up and true to form, we just walked away. Quite lucky that was the acceleration point in a reversal. And then what we did, we just simply sat back, took it easy, and we just waited for the moving averages to cross over to confirm a downward trend. You can get downward trends inside ranges. So that's absolutely fine. Okay, a lot of people don't don't recognize that. You can get trends of inside ranges or even trends of inside trends. You know, it's absolutely fine. Those people who follow harmonics, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about, where you can get A, B, C, D pattern inside A, B, C, D pattern. Um, so here we go. We're... Obviously, people who stayed in the trade here are still very happy. They've been looked after, but you get the, get the first meaningful pullback. And now what we're waiting for is the price to start making lower highs. There's our first entry here. Sorry, second entry, my apologies. So we're able to take advantage of the first lower high in what will soon amount to be a downward trend inside a range. And there we go. So we're just waiting for another pullback rather than just a hesitation. And this was our trade of last year, one of our huge trades. Some of our clients really did fabulously well off it, like fabulously well. Because some clients just sold on the level as well as took this sell trade here and took this one and took this one. If you imagine like all risking 2% for every trade and having your ultimate target, even at the midpoint, you're making a very, very handsome percentage gain. Okay, so 
for those people who trade um, with the trend and they wanted a high probability, low reward outcome, then the take profit target was the previous swing low, but a number of our clients just simply um, let the position run. And of course, March, April campaigning for Brexit was getting all pretty nasty on the streets of England, I remember very, very clearly what it was like. And then of course, enter June, and we had, I remember that night, waking up in the morning, like three in the morning, looked at the charts, didn't even look at the news, and I saw that enormous spike, and it was Nigel Farage. His face next to it pretty much. <laughs> we were down like a thousand pips, which is equivalent to 10 cents against the US dollar. Absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. So, you know, people who took those trade, that trade did very well, just to the midpoint here even. But now, fast forward to this year, we've actually got, just on a, on a point with our positive carry theme, as well as trading reversals, we had that test on this level of demand here. This horizontal level here, price hasn't been below this point since the 1970s. So we can reasonably expect if, as and when price gets to, um, sorry, 1,000, sorry, one spot 166 here at this level, we can reasonably expect buying pressure to come in. And I'd far rather buy the British pound against the Swiss franc, actually, if I'm trading cash daily rolling because of the positive carry. Even though in um, England, or Britain, should I say, uh, we've got a tiny derisory interest rate, it's still higher than what they have in Switzerland, which is um, negative, okay? So we will be taking advantage um, of that. And if we're in a position here, entry just on the level, stop loss round about here, just below 1,000, one, sorry, one spot, one five hundred, my apologies. Um, we can do very well just from setting up again and just leaving this to do its thing. You can see how long it took um, for it to come up to hit target in 2011. It took um, a decent amount of time over a year for it to hit its target here. But if we're in this long-term trade here by entering on this horizontal level and we're in a long trade against the Swiss franc for about a year until it hits this level here at the very top or indeed the midpoints, which is not an unreasonable target for those people who'd rather have a higher probability of winning yet a smaller reward, then that's good enough, okay? But this is very much a long-term set and get trade with positive carry, and this is why we're waiting for price to come down. You can see the previous three occasions where the British pound has spiked down to this level here at 1 spot 165. Um, we can see the whiplash that occurred at the time, so we can look to capitalize off the back of that and have our buy orders just above the level, stop loss below, points are expected at before, and hope for an easy, quick fill and the price to go up again, and like it has done historically before. Okay, so that is hopefully a good little kind of insight into not just um, trading um, the carry trade, but also being a little bit more mindful as to um, who's taking the money out of your trading account every night without you realizing it, as well as an insight into trading reversals, as well as trends. So we've covered an awful lot today, and you've done very well if you're still um, dare I say, still logged in, <laughs> your head hasn't exploded. <laughs> um, so one thing I want to do, because I know we're running out of time, how are we doing for time, Simon? We're fine, Rob, we've got about another five or six minutes. Okay, good, all right then, well, if you've got five or six minutes, let me... Um, let, let me... Maybe before we go on to that, uh, there's a couple of questions that are... Yeah, sure. Do you no want worries. to finish off first and then go back? No problem. Let me have a look. Sorry, the questions I've uh, I've um, I've got that window closed actually. Let's okay, I'll, I'll just read them out for you. Um, Richard said brokers have got big carry trade interest rate margins, uh, which erode the benefit. Uh, who are the brokers who are reasonable on this and uh, pay carry trade money nightly? For example, on the the Australian New Zealand dollar short or even the euro. US dollar short positions. Okay, well, you know, and it's a very, 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 very good question. Thank you. That's a very um, good question. I know that you know it's the kind of question people will be asking further down the line after leaving this webinar. And I would say I use Atom Eight uh, as my broker. A T O M number eight, um, actually run by a personal friend of mine. Um, I'm not just saying that out of nepotism, but they. They are a, um, a broker which do not have that. So you, can, you can make money from 
the overnight carrot sorry the overnight carry if it's in your favor I know some other brokers some of the less scrupulous brokers out there they they've cottoned on to the fact that people are getting educated about the carry trade and are looking to basically penalize them in this respect as they are with LIBOR plus their inverted commas discretionary markup and it's always something worth checking out before you go to a broker what the overnight fees are LIBOR, LIBOR like inter, London Interbank operate that's fair enough that's standard but what they're markup is can make your trading very 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 expensive indeed so shop around is my advice okay and um, what what currency is this please we were talking about now this is about seven or eight minutes ago sorry John's asking a question about what currency you were discussing um, I don't know what what chart it was referring to uh, oh, the the covered um, pound Swiss Swiss franc. Oh, pound Swiss franc. Yes, that's right. That was the chart I was last talking about, and that's I referred to um, our Brexit. Well, what, what I call our Brexit trade. Not that well, Brexit, of course, favoured the the direction, but it was an example of um, essentially a range based play where we simply took it from the top of the range to the bottom and our view was perpetuated by news which was positive in our direction um, thanks to Nigel Farage even if <laughs> regardless of whether I'm a Brexiteer or not you know it's just an example of how news if how I we or anyone should use news to perpetuate a winning trade okay news can be used as a catalyst rather than actually trading the news, sitting down thinking, okay, I'm going to try and predict what the direction is by entering just before the news announcement. It's far better to simply just set a, a trade up with high profit potential, like high reward to risk, should I say, and just simply ride it out. And if you're wrong, at least, you know, you lose a small percentage of your risk manage. If you're right and the news is in your favor or the theme is in your favor, then at least it's helped kind of perpetuate a winning decision far more. If you're riding a wave, it might it makes sense to ride it until the end, right? Gotcha. I hope that answers the question. <laughs> yeah, I think it does. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Chan, hello. Um, how do you collect your interest if you do carry trade by spread betting? Um, well, every night is 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 taken from your account every night, essentially. Um, if you've got positive or negative carry. And that's another thing you might want to check with your broker. Some brokers have very funny ways of doing it. I would expect nothing less, and I demand nothing less, of having it taken away or given to me every night, depending on whether I have positive carry or negative carry. And to avoid, I just want to reiterate this, to avoid paying negative carry, if you're in a position, like many of our clients are for typically days, weeks, months, um, it makes sense to trade if you've got negative carry, i.e. if you're selling the currency with the higher interest rate and buying the one with the... Um, smaller interest rate or the lesser interest rate it makes sense to have a, a futures contract okay which okay at the time of buying yes the spread is a little bit wider than the cash daily rolling alternative but you'll save yourself so much money I promise you Gary's asking what the name of the broker was uh, Mr. Chan does that answer your question and uh that's why you're thinking about that, Gary. Saying, "What's the name of the broker that you recommended?" It was Atom Eight, I believe. Yeah, Atom Eight. I mean, I mean, there are a number of good brokers out there. I mean, that's who I use, and I've had no problems with them at all. They they've always been good to me over the years, and they they they're very um they they're very um what's the word straight by the by the book, and um uh, you know it does make sense. Sorry, it's Atom A T O M with the number, the digit eight, doesn't it? Dot com. That's right. That's the one. Yeah. Okay. I'll just put that in the chat box, everybody. If you want to have a look at them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're they're a good broker. I mean, I've been with them for about four years, and um, I've got a number of other brokerage accounts of other companies, but they're the ones I use for my specifically very long term trades with positive carry. There you go. <laughs> I've got a number of other brands are available. <laughs> yeah, okay. sure. Every brokerage has, you know, they might fall down in some some areas. Some brokers um, are excellent in other areas. So that's why it's good to have a a, a set a collection of broker accounts, okay, for different purposes. And when you become wise to broker tricks, advantages, disadvantages, specific ways, specific strategies, you you'll see the need for various different brokers. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, we've got another few minutes just for you to finish off what you were moving on to, um, if, you, if you'd like, Rob. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you, Simon. They're all uh, great questions, and please do keep them coming. I mean, this really does conclude the actual pith of the webinar, but what I wanted to do was really, as you've taken time out of your busy schedules, was to invite you to um, our um, groundbreak, well, I'll say, our ultimate program, which um, is essentially dedicated to helping anyone who wants to trade from as little as 10 minutes a day, any asset class at any market, achieve that. And we have been valued at $1,997 by the CPD, and they've accredited us. But today, exclusive with the London Investment Week, and I'll stra stress that today only, you can access it for $30 for a test drive for 30 days and see what you think. And in terms of what you get, you get everything. We do not hold anything back whatsoever. It's all there for you to take at your leisure. Okay, so you get access to our strategies, both basic and advanced, all of our video training, um, flip books, um, podcasts. We have weekly market w w webinars. We have guest um, traders come in, like Julian, who's got like 25 years experience. Some of the veterans come in. Uh, we, we've got we share the trade ideas which we take. We don't, like I said, keep anything back at all. And um, <laughs> curiously enough, we've got pattern recognition software which you can download and integrate with MetaTrader. We've got an audio hypnosis audio course. We've got like well over 20 hours worth of learning, um, which you can learn on the go. You can learn from your phone, your your tablet, your 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 um, have it on the loudspeaker on your phone, uh, so sorry, on your computer at home. And all we need to do really to get this place is use the link that Simon puts in the chat window, um, or simply um, uh, use uh, go to that and use the promo code around the clock, and that will generate your discount to thirty dollars. Okay, and it's an absolute steal. In the highly unlikely event you don't like it, we'll just give you a full refund, no questions asked. Okay, so. We look forward to welcoming you aboard for those of you who do come on board. Um, if not, then absolutely no love lost. It's been a pleasure, um, well, talking to you today. And um, yeah, any more questions, please do drop me a line or ask Simon and for them to Simon and Hill for them to me. Okay. Thank you very much, guys. Okay, thank, thank, you. Yeah, thank you very much, Rob, uh, coming to join us. Uh, any more final questions on carry trading? or the carry trade rather, um, before we say goodbye uh, to Rob and, uh, and and move on. No, you, you've, you've answered everything that there is to know about carry trading, Rob. Thank you very much for that <laughs> indeed. I've, okay. got off, I've got off lightly. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, thank you for that. We will uh, take care and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll speak to you again uh, in the future. And uh, we'll, we'll follow up these links in the the email that we normally do uh, on the, the follow-up day so people can have a second chance to get that. You said that offer is open tonight. Until tonight. Until tonight. Okay, well, there we are. It's in the chat box now, so you need to, you need to act fast if you want to take advantage of it.